As you know, one day in Minecraft is 20 minutes in real life. So 100 days is approximately 33 hours if you do not sleep. This will be something completely different though. I will be doing this in an action storybook series. This is my first ever video commentary, so please subscribe, like and support the channel. Links in the description. Now let's get to it. We join the adventurer in a hilly plains biome. After looking around, he goes for a walk. Soon he comes across a village. The adventurer is greeted by a villager who comes and welcomes him. After talking to the villager, the adventurer searches the village for loot and useful items. Doing this makes him hungry, so he creates a crafting table and bakes some bread. After making bread, it's time to gather resources by punching a tree. Whilst punching the tree, he hears growls and groans coming from underground. Interested in this, the adventurer decides to dig down where the noise is coming from. Hitting stone, he decides to craft some tools. When he goes to mine, it is becoming night time, so it's off to bed. The next morning, it was back to digging. After some time, the adventurer found the sound. Zombies. Using the sword, the zombies were quickly dealt with. After quickly looking around and being stared at by two creepers, it was time to run away and make better tools. Once the tools are crafted, it's mining time, not near the creepers. Soon it was time to bridge across to the other side. Slowly but surely reach the other side. Lighting up the area, start mining some copper, where a zombie decided to have a bath. After reaching the lower levels, he was shot by a skeleton. Thinking of running away, he decided not to and decided to face those scary mobs. With zombies trying to hug him, sword swinging, the zombies finally were no more. Exploring some more, he soon came across more skeletons that shot him he ran away, almost dying from their arrows. After bravely running away, he reached the surface. While chomping on bread, the adventurer decided it's exploring time. Searching this way and that, he came across a water cave. Admiring the cave and its potential for the future, he forgot he was not a fish and started to drown. After this, it was time to head back to the village. Once there, he saw a cow, which would be perfect for a future project. Putting the cow in a pen, being up for two days had made him tired, so he was off to bed. After collecting some meat, it was time to collect resources from a nearby surface cave. There was coal, iron, more coal, and some more iron. Heading back after a full day of mining, there were two more cows to capture. <coughs> Waking up early, the adventurer went outside only to find mobs on fire running at him. Without a second thought, he swung his sword at them, pushing them back. Suddenly a creeper blew up behind him. Stunned, he gathered himself defeating the last mob. After checking the damage, it was time to talk to the Iron Golem and tell him he needs to do better. Just then, he saw a spider which the Iron Golem was ignoring. The spider dealt with, it was time to plan where to build the first project. Seeing that his inventory was full, it was time to put things away in a chest for safekeeping. With the inventory sorted, it was time to make a furnace and smelt iron. Oh. 
While waiting, he fed the cow some nice wheat. Once iron was smelted, the adventurer made iron boots for protection and upgraded his iron pickaxe. Learning from last time, he had made a shield before heading back underground. Now feeling safer with a shield, the adventurer gathered iron water spider gathered more iron fought two zombies, one with a sword On the way back up, using the new iron pickaxe, mined gold ore. Feeling like a little more mining, he headed back up and started a new mine shaft. Once down, quickly noticed that he forgot to bring torches for mining. So back up to the surface he went. Reaching the top, it was time to smelt mm -hmm. iron and craft a bucket, chest plate and a helmet. Seeing it was sunny, it was time to gather sand and turn it into glass. <laughs> Trying to make charcoal for torches, a villager could not get into his house, so the adventurer helped him. Once more iron was smelted, it was time to put on a pair of pants and start the first project. A cow farm. Mm. On the way to bed, he fell in a hole. Once he managed to get himself out of that hole, he tried to sleep, but a zombie attacked him. Having dealt with a zombie, he could sleep. When morning rose, it was time to finish the cow farm. Almost finished, a creeper tried to blow the boots off the adventurer. Having recovered from the scare, he finished the farm and it was time to move the cows over to it. While convincing the cows into the farm, one of the cows ate the last wheat from the adventurer's hand. So there was nothing else to do but go to bed. The next day, the adventurer saw villagers in trouble and bravely fought the zombies. Saving the villager from three zombies was so stressful that the adventurer fed the cows and spent the rest of the day resting in bed. Having had a long rest from the previous days, the adventurer went out gathering meat to cook in the future. After gathering meat from volunteers, it was time to chop down a tree. On the way back to the village, another volunteer was found and the adventurer placed down a campfire with carpet on top to stop being burnt. The rest of the day was spent cooking food for the future use. After making sure he had everything, it was time to go back to the mine. Torches in hand, the adventurer gathered iron, then built a 3x3 mine shaft and started digging. There was a little iron here, a little iron there, a bit of coal and some copper. Then mining iron there was blue, but not shiny blue, lapis blue. When it was time to go back up, the adventurer got lost. After finding the way, he figured out the level of the second floor 
and calculated and mined and found his way to the second floor and right into a horde of mobs fighting zombies, spiders and more zombies and then a scary creeper Dodging the blast of the creeper, the adventure gathered resources and went to the surface where he was greeted by a villager. After doing general chores, it was time to go to bed. In the morning, the adventurer fed the cows and decided it was time to gather a bucket of lava. So to the waterfall cave. After carefully jumping down and seeing zombies having a lava bath, he grabbed the lava and ran back up. Remembering one last thing, it was back to the mines to get dripstone. Having all the supplies required, it was time to start building the lava farm. While building the farm, a villager came to talk, asking him how to build the farm. Before he could finish the farm, night fell and it was time for bed. As soon as the day started, it was time to finish the lava farm by placing dripstone and a lava source. Checking the chest, the inventor noticed he was short of resources, so to the waterfall cave again. Everywhere he turned, it seemed like a creeper was there ready to pop. A quick stop for redstone and he continued exploring, coming face to face with another creeper. After exploring, he was heading back when zombies slid down the water slide, but then there was one dancing at the top of the water. Just then, the adventurer saw what the zombies were guarding. Diamonds. Bravely he fought them, and after his victory it was time to collect the reward of diamonds. With diamonds in hand, it was time to run away to safety. But it was night. Seeing villagers in trouble, Adventurer went to help, but decided it was better to wait until morning. Once morning, the Adventurer went to save the villager, but it was too late. The zombies were coming out of the house. But the adventurer was too good. Swing after swing took them down. Just then a creeper joined the fight, but he was no match. Then the zombie leader, dressed in diamond armor, came at the adventurer. He was pushing the adventurer back, and then pushing back the adventurer was fighting the zombie and the spider. Swing, 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 and he had won. The adventurer then wore his prize. Sorting out his inventory, he put a chicken in the furnace for no reason. Then got his mining picks ready, checked his supplies and went to the waterfall cave. Then noticed he had no torches, but mined it anyway. It was dark when he returned, 
and more villagers needed saving from zombies. The adventurer was chased by baby zombies. One joined forces with a spider, but the adventurer was too good. After saving the villagers, he went to bed. Having learnt from the previous day, torches in hand, our adventurer was ready for attempt number two. Facing a bouncy jelly, he bravely fought and won. Once victorious, he started a new mine shaft. Just as he was clearing, there was diamonds, which he left there and continued digging. After some tough digging, the adventurer found more diamonds. Three, in fact, which he mined around them and continued on. Sometime later, while mining, suddenly there was a cave showing. After playing hide and seek with the mob, he went in, facing a zombie straight away. He ran past the stone teeth and started to search the cave. Finding gold, an enderman having a lava bath, and redstone. Suddenly there was diamonds and gold. Grabbing redstone, the adventurer headed back and cleaned up the mine shaft, and then headed back, grabbing shiny redstone on the way out of the cave. Night was falling, and after he put things away, it was time for bed. Once again, mobs were on fire and attacking. After battles were won, it was time to add the steak cooker part of the cow farm. Seeing as the villager had disappeared, don't know what could have happened. The adventurer destroyed their house. Feeding the cows, he noticed an army of creepers and ran for home. The next day, after facing two creepers, the adventurer ran back inside. Will he ever come out? Will the creepers ever leave? Join us next episode to find out. When we left our adventurer, he was hiding from creepers, not willing to come out. Now having recovered his strength and courage, he is out of his house and building. What is he building, you ask? 
Well, it is a not bad attempt at something that is almost pretty with a twist of usefulness. The building will house the enchanting room, built on stilts to make it harder for mobs to get inside. Using slabs, our inventor is making cobblestone go further. The outline of the build will be polished deep slate to add a look of importance. The windows are large enough to let light in during the day and add a modern look to the overall building. After seeing he was in need of more types of blocks, it was exploring time. He had crafted an iron door, checked his inventory was good, grabbed the gear and off he went. Just having left, he was easily distracted by a cave. Once down into the cave, he was face to face with zombies and skeletons. By having a shield, they were no great threat. With confidence at full, he went further and tried fighting an enderman. Whilst being bullied by a skeleton, his shield broke. Quickly, he got out of the cave. When he reached the surface, he had to dodge spiders, and whilst running away, saw the lights of home. All he had to do was swim across the river, jump up, and get inside, and go to bed. Having survived the distraction from the previous day, our adventurer went out, still in search of different types of blocks. Just past a lovely flower field was a village. This village had a ruined portal in the middle of the town square, and a giant hole just outside the village. While looking around at the amazing land, he collected birch wood and oak. Unfortunately, there was no other resources when the adventurer went to bed that night. The next day, it was searching time once again. No. After thinking he was going to fall out of the world, he searched the cave and continued exploring. Finding only birch and oak, the adventurer said goodbye to the village and headed home. After getting lost, he found his way home. Checking that the cows were warm, he went to bed. The following day, he used birch slabs for the floor, which gave it a clean look. After making a grand stair entrance, The adventurer added chests and an oak slab roof. Finally, a carrot farm for the environment. Waking up bright and early, the adventurer was attacked by two creepers. One taken care of, the second chased him around. Thinking quick, move the creeper near water, and the creeper was stuck and doomed. Now thinking about the ender dragon, 
the inventor of farm sugar cane for paper. And next was the enchanting table. Going down through the wrong mine, he jumped down and then down the waterfall. Once down in the cave, the adventurer started the task of getting an enchanting table by getting distracted and going caving. Seeing a witch and a flaming dessert, he ran the other way. Surprised by a spider, the adventurer looked in a small tunnel. Taking care of the zombies, looked around and found a dead end, and the spider just minding its own business. So he went elsewhere. Mining resources, when there were, which was rare. Continued searching, a spider tried to eat him, but that wasn't happening today. Heading around, more zombies approach, but they turn into zombie food. Suddenly a baby zombie appeared, and the adventurer was scared but won. While mining gold, a bouncing jelly was watching the adventurer, so the adventurer made it disappear. Still trying to find resources, the adventurer ran out of torches. Thinking quickly, used a furnace to make a bucket and light. Then mined resources by fire. Now started a battle with the adventurer trying to gather resources and the mobs trying to stop him. Deciding it was getting too risky, it was time to get the obsidian for the enchanting table. Finally. Putting water over lava started mining obsidian. It was so slow. The required four obsidian for the enchant table gathered, it was time to make the table and try to enchant tools and equipment, with no luck at all. It was time to go to the nether for blaze rods and ender pearls. Having a peak, it was a scary soul valley, so back home to get equipment. No portal, skeletons attacking, is this the end? Find out what happens next episode. With the portal destroyed by Garth 
Uh, Ventura fought the skeleton, using the portal for protection since his shield was long gone. Heading in search of a fortress, which he found one, just around the corner. Although every time he approached the fortress, he was chased away. After this occurred over and over and over, the adventurer decided to run for the fortress and risk his life. Once he ran out of arrows, it was time to rush into the fortress and try to dodge as many hits as possible. Once in the fortress, the adventurer placed guardrails when a blaze punched him with a fireball. Having recovered, it was time to look around for a chest with iron or a flint and steel. Having no luck at the entrance, the adventurer looked upstairs. Adding more guardrails, he came face to face with more blazes. Tricking wither skeletons to chase him, he used his sword to chop their bones. Then one dropped a skull, which he wore as a helmet. After searching many chests, he finally found a chest with iron, guarded by a blade, which he fought and won. Having iron in hand, our adventurer fought his way towards the exit. Once there, he blocked himself in a hole and started his mission of finding gravel. Digging around, he saw gravel, but it was impossible to get to. So on he went digging. Looking all over the place, he could not find any gravel within reach. So it was time to look elsewhere. After fighting mobs from the fortress, away from the fortress, he ran back towards the portal and started digging once again. As the adventurer started digging, an enderman was after him. So the adventurer took his sword and made an ender pearl appear. And then it was digging time again. Soon he saw the target. All the adventurer had to do was get down to the gravel. Bridging and staircasing down, he ran into skeletons. While fighting these skeletons, he fell down. Quickly, he ran back up and hid in a box. When he had a look, there were skeletons to greet him, but back in the box he went. Using the old saying, you can't lose if you don't fight, he staircased down to the gravel level. Digging and searching, searching and digging, he found gravel and fell down. With much panic, quickly found a place to hide. And grabbed some gravel. Now all he had to do was get a piece of flint. Knowing flint drops one per ten blocks, after the eleventh block, he obtained some flint. He now quickly headed for the portal placing many blocks to stop anyone following.
timidly he reached the portal and lit the way home. Of course, it was night time. So running and announcing he was home, it was to bed. The next day, the adventurer relaxed by cooking food. Starting a netherwort farm, which is the most important part of any good potion. After making the farm, using bone meal, farmed as much as the adventurer could need of sugar cane. For now, anyway. With a simple day coming to an end, the adventurer thought towards the future. Wanting an affinity enchantment, the adventurer spent all day trying to get good enchantments and enchantments that will help with the ender dragon. At night, he ran through picturesque landscapes to find a savannah. Where he was not afraid of any of the mobs. Until a spider stole his health. With that, he ran back towards home. Getting distracted by a cave, he then continued running all the way home to safety. Clearing the land for the next project, which was a phantom tower. He decided on the spot and started to build until he ran out of materials. Not wanting to go out at night, wait until the morning to gather more resources. After a full day's exploring, our adventurer was lost and alone in a jungle. Thinking he was being followed, he climbed a tree. Some time later, as the night was passing, he decided to run for it. Feeling like he could run forever, he ran and ran until he made it all the way home. Now home, he finished the tower and placed a roof on top of it. The next four days were pretty much the same thing for the adventurer. Trying to get enchantments, clearing the lands of mobs, and at night, trying to get phantom membranes. Although one thunderstorm created a skeleton trap. After activating the trap, the adventurer created more arrows, and to his surprise, was not a terrible shot with his bow. That night he failed to get a membrane again. Getting bored, he went riding on his horse. Doing this he found a village. When night fell, he decided to convert a building for phantoms. Will he hit something? Can he ever get a membrane? Fly back next time to find out. We rejoin our adventurer, failing to hit a single phantom with an arrow.
and soon he runs out of arrows. Forced to make more, the adventurer could only make four arrows. Finally, he hit one. After missing the next two, lined up and hit the phantom again, this time dropping the membrane. Seeing the phantoms were not coming down, our adventurer went and received his prize. Unable to gain another, he headed back home. Once he arrived, it was potion brewing time. First making an awkward potion. Then turning into a slow falling. He grabbed a piece of redstone and made a slow falling of 4 minutes. Putting the potions away, next it was time to create the Ender Dragon battle gear. Boots will have to be made later. Running low on resources, it was time to go digging. Trying to get to the waterfall cave, a phantom struck him. After two hits, the adventurer was down to one heart. With the water like a warm blanket, the adventurer hid in the water until finding a ledge. Mining in a straight line, block after block. He was soon greeted by a cave. Not being able to say no to a bit of exploring, off he went. Staircasing down, he didn't mind the nice blue lapis. He decided it could wait. Lower and lower he went, soon near the bottom of the world. Not wanting to be burnt by the lava, he blocked it off. and start mining, trying to find any useful resources. With mining done, collecting the iron and the lapis on the way up of the staircase, while on the way up, the adventurer got lost but found the way eventually. Arriving at home as night fell, he took the chance to try and get more phantom membrane, this time with success. Continuing to try and enchant equipment for the dragon fight, he decided to upgrade the sugarcane farm into an auto harvest farm, as there was no need for a bigger farm yet. The biggest problem the adventurer had at the moment was ender pearls. So using lava from his farm, made obsidian and headed out. Reaching the ocean, he decided to cross the ocean in search of land. Along the way, the skeleton horse decided he liked the view of the ground better. Our adventurer had to leave the horse behind. Skipping across the water, soon he came to a village. Not wanting to go any further, he made the portal just outside the village and went through. The adventurer was looking for a warped forest, because the endermen were fond of the greenish blue lands within that biome. But unfortunately, everywhere he looked, he could not find a sign of the forest. Knowing looking on the surface was best, he ventured out and soon face to face with skeletons and ghasts. He started to regret the decision, then really regretted the decision. 
he decided to look elsewhere. Whilst looking elsewhere, he found a fortress. Being a person who sticks to a plan and doesn't get distracted would have meant the adventurer did not go investigate the fortress. Having a quick look and after Blazers asking him to leave, it was back to the task at hand. Mining and building a tunnel with no hope of finding a forest when suddenly he fell down. With only half a heart remaining, the adventurer was wide awake and decided to head home. Not scared at all, he bravely ran all the way home. The next night, he did not want to travel to the nether after what happened last time. So he tried to find endermen and obtain arrows from skeletons in the overworld. After two nights not seeing one enderman, it was time to travel, but unfortunately it was to build a portal in the hope to find a warped forest. Arriving in a crimson forest looked around, even with his eyes put to max distance. There was no sign of a warped forest, so back home it was. Having asked the oracle, he now had a direction to head in hope of finding a warped forest. So, not wanting to, but knowing he has a goal to reach, he headed in that direction. Hopping to it, the adventurer moved through the valley into a crimson forest, mined his way down and up the other side. Then from behind attacked wild hogs, taking the first out. The second had taken half the heart. When the third fell, all that was left was half a heart and pieces of bacon. Stunned and wounded, the adventurer knew he must go on and find the warped forest. Another crimson forest, a face full of lava, and then there stood just what he had been searching for, a warped forest. So, without a second thought, it was time to collect enderpearls, gathering 14 enderpearls in total. Now heading home, it was the final stretch of preparations. Mining resources and gathering experience from mobs for his battle gear, but being in need of more experience, he was forced to go to the nether using all his courage he went through the fortress obtaining experience orbs it was required to borrow more enderpearls from the endermen After gaining some more enderpearls, headed home once more. Spending the next two days in preparation for the Ender Dragon fight, it was time to find the stronghold. With the standard way of finding one, which consisted of throwing an eye of Ender and chasing, then repeating this until you found that the eyes changed direction. Finding a village, the adventurer had high hopes. Just then he saw a pillager guard post on the edge of the village. That will have to wait. Into the stronghold he went, looking everywhere he could, finding nothing but his old footsteps. He started blocking any way that was not new, and then there it was, 
the end portal with zero eyes in it. Having 12 ender eyes, he placed them in. After placing all 12 eyes, there was still one missing. Feeling unlucky, he knew he had to return. So he decided it's home to get dressed and then it's time to go fight the ender dragon. Giving one more try to getting an infinity enchantment, failing again. That aside, he got all of his equipment together. Geared up in his nice shiny pink, he skipped across the water and was now back at the stronghold. He checked his equipment one last time, knowing once he goes through, there is no coming back until the fight is over. And will the end be the end? Will the dragon eat him? Will he get lost? Jump back next time to find out what happens. Let's get to it. Our adventurers spawn in on top of a floating island of obsidian. Making sure not to look at any endermen, he bridged across to the main island. Taking a potion of slow falling and increasing his eyesight, it was time to fight the boss. Her name being the Ender Dragon. While missing every shot he fired, she bit the adventurer. Moving location, the adventurer shot at another crystal. This time, he hit the crystal first time. Knowing the more crystals he destroyed, the better his chances. Shot at one, missed. Changing target, direct hit. Now our adventurer started to show how many arrows he hit crystals with were lucky by not being able to hit a crystal with 18 arrows. Knowing what the adventurer was trying to do, the ender dragon knocked him off the pillar he was building. Again our adventurer was shooting arrow after arrow and missing. Getting mad she bit him, again. While using his potion's floating ability, she slapped him with one of her wings. Pillaring up to a caged crystal, he started breaking the iron bars. When just then she attacked again, so this time the adventurer hugged the corner of the obsidian and stayed up. Again she attacked, but could not knock him down, and shooting quickly the adventurer shot her and then another crystal. Eating a golden apple to recover, he was ready to fight with his sword. Striking her toes, he had reduced her to half health when she started to fly away. Continuing to shoot at crystals and missing, when suddenly she breathed her poison on him. Twice. While landing, she slapped him with one of her wings the adventurer went in now, tapping her on the head. When she had enough, off she flew again. Chomping a golden apple and a golden carrot, he continued the fight, bonking her on the head. Then she would fly away. The adventurer was not paying attention when she snuck up behind him and attacked. With sword in hand, does the final charge. Hit after hit, he was getting closer. Then suddenly, it happened. The adventurer sent her to another dimension. Collecting his reward, the dragon egg, which was the only one in the entire world. After collecting more ender pearls, he now built his way up to the gateway. On the outer island, looked for an end city to gain the second prize, which located on an end ship was 
the dragon head. A full day's hiking around the end, there he saw a tiny city and looted what he could. With no end city in sight, it was time to head back to the overworld. Wanting to change his enchanting building into a building with more uses, but he needed more resources. Skipping through a forest and a flowery field, he came across a village. Spending all day and night gathering resources needed to build his new home. With resources in hand, it was time to remove the old building. Before removing the enchantment table, try to enchant his diamond pickaxe. And there it was, Fortune 3. Not only that, the pickaxe had given him two bonus enchantments. The next couple of days, the adventurer started building... The building was a stepping stone to a possible base. With a wood outline and a textured stone wall, this was a basis of a new home. With the outside finished, enough for now, anyway, it was time to do the interior. Wanting the base to be easy to use and somewhere he would use as much as possible. The adventurer placed an enchanting table, a storage room with crafting tables, and a battle gear station. With all his possessions put away and sorted, it was time to get ready for the next fight. First step in getting ready for the battle was to fish. This took our adventurer an entire day to obtain a puffer fish. Though having obtained a bow with an infinity enchantment made it more worth it. Making fresh gear for the battle, it was potion brewing time. Grabbing any good enchantments on his gear whilst making the potion, and he got lucky with some good enchantments. After preparations were ready, it was time to head off. This battle was going to be against three Elder Guardians. Running day and night, he arrived at the village he had visited before. He ran through and jumped into the ocean. Seeing the light of the monument, he headed closer to the fight. Suddenly, he was cursed. Drinking his water breathing potion, it was time to head in and fight. Using the TNT, the adventurer placed a TNT, one on each arm of the building and another on top.
While doing this, he was forced to dodge laser beams. With the TNT exploded, our adventurer knew it was time to fight. Striking as hard as he could, one and the guardian gone. Next, the second fell, and finally, it was time to fight the third. Whilst going for one of the rewards of the monument, he forgot that he had a stone pickaxe and almost mined the gold blocks with it. But realizing his error at the last second, it was time to go. He went. He was going to grab a couple of tears for a future task. What are the tears for? Is he going to fall down in the nether? Will the portal break? Swim back next time to find out. We left our adventurer about to go into the nether. Now in the nether, it was time to collect ghast tears. Dodging skeletons, ghast fireballs, and enderman eyes, he jumped here and there, occasionally catching fire. Being in a soul sand belly made collecting tears easier. So our adventurer had collected the two tiers required. Not wanting to stay any longer than he had to, it was time to get back to the overworld. Heading home, he came across a ruined portal, which had nothing great inside. The rest of the day was spent trekking across the vast world. Night was falling as he arrived, so the adventurer went to bed. Crafting four end crystals out of the gas tears, he then put them away for safekeeping. Next project prep time. Our adventurer headed out and went to the first village he found, with a ruined portal in the town square. To make sure that the villagers stayed safe, it was required to trap them inside their homes. With night falling, the adventurer also rings the bell to help villagers go home. Then he went round trapping the villagers inside their homes. When night was increasing the chance of being attacked, the adventurer borrowed a bed. After collecting meat, our adventurer thought he saw a cave. Not wanting to give up the opportunity for mining, he started digging down in hope of using his Fortune 3 pickaxe on some resources. Lower and lower he went, only seeing copper so far. Suddenly, a possible cave. When the adventurer went in, it was an abandoned mine shaft. Looking around and placing torches, he found storage chests. The second chest had better items than the first, and the adventurer took the diamonds, accidentally dropped his fortune three picker, and then turned around. Boom. <coughs> After having a heart attack, the adventurer observed in the dangerous cave spider spawner, which he deactivated until he could build an XP farm. The adventurer went around collecting iron and coal. When he resurfaced, it was night time and a skeleton said hi. After going to bed to skip the night, he started for home. The rest of the day was spent waiting for iron to smelt. While waiting for this, 
Our inventor decided he needed to invent an easier way to smelt large amounts. The design he invented was a four furnace super smelter, which evenly sent items into the system. Trying to decide on the outside decoration, he selected nether bricks and crimson trees. One problem. With the choices he made, he lacked the resources to actually build it. So he needed to invent another farm. This time it was an auto harvest nether crop farm. Thinking towards the future, our inventor decided it was time to face his fears and go into the nether. And specifically, the fortress he almost lost all his heart to. So getting lucky with a looting three on his sword, it was time to go into the nether. Once there, he ran and hopped as fast as he could. Entering the tunnel, he was almost there. With memories of his visits to the nether, the adventurer was nervous about going into the fortress. Taking a fireball to the feet, he took a deep breath and went raiding. Looking everywhere he could, swinging his sword and shooting his bow at anything that moved. He was collecting all the drops from mobs. This included two wither skeleton skulls making a total of three. This was perfect for a wither summoning. With end crystals crafted, Three Wither Skeleton Skulls collected, it was time for preparation for a rematch with the Ender Dragon. Then after being victorious, using the End Portal block to summon the Wither in a Wither Trap. The Ender Dragon fight this time, our Ventra would wear leather armor. Enchantments were selected by what was available in one enchanting session. Making sure to have what was left from the last fight, our Ventra had a good night's sleep. Now on the way, suddenly a creeper blew up in his face. Running through plains, swamp, and also Savannah, he finally reached the Stronghold Village. Down into the Stronghold he went. Without a second thought, he jumped through the portal. He then ran up to the end portal, where he needed a place and crystals to summon the dragon. Now all the crystals placed, the Ender Dragon was summoned from the dimension which she was banished. Once the crystals were finished, the fight was on. Shooting at the crystals, two were destroyed. Having taken three crystals out, started trying for a fourth, when the dragon bit him very hard, requiring a golden apple to recover. Using cover, the Ventura took out another crystal. Without notice, an enemy hit by the dragon's breath was attacking the Ventura. Being under the platform helped the Ventura turn him into an Enderpearl.
grabbing a bottle of Dragon's Breath, he was struck through the cobblestone platform with a second golden apple eaten he ran and focused on trying to hit as many crystals as possible Trying to hit one crystal, then the dragon blocked the arrows with her body. Seeing her perch, he ran in and ignoring the fact that he was on fire, started hitting her. Getting her down by quarter health when she finally flew away. Running around, he noticed she was staying up until she was fully healed. Then hitting him with her breath, while recovering, the Alentra ran into a swooping attack, running for cover. And then back, he went in again. She was quarter health again, the Alentra ran into cover and looped back and attacked once more. Hit after hit, he was getting off the hand. The adventurer was defeated by an enderman, who had been hit by a dragon's breath and was angry at the adventurer. This story may be over, but the adventure has not finished.